Hello and welcome, you're on Gut Excel Healing. This is going to be a air signs reading. So if your sun, moon or ascendant is in either of Libra, Aquarius or Gemini star signs, then this reading may apply to you or parts of it um, that may be applicable to your situation. Uh, we're going to look at some uh, external influences, things that might be coming from outside of you that are influence, impacting your aura as well as some internal energies that you may be kind of experiencing and then high frequency vibes um, that you may, might want to be tapping to at this time as well. Uh, so as always, you know, take what resonates and discard the rest. And um, of course, you know, this guidance here is not um, designed or intended to replace the, um, the guidance that you could receive from a mental health or well-being of professional, okay? Uh, it's just to perhaps give you some other perspectives and other things to consider um, or you know as always it's interesting to just hear different people's points of view on things uh, I find that can be helpful at times um, so and you may as well um, so we're going to just uh, I'll just shuffle here and uh, right I'm just going to do one quick little shuffle and then, then we're going to cut the deck and uh, just calling in the Ascending Masters, Archangels and Spirit Guides to assist us with this at this time. And um, I'm, you know, in particular there are uh, Arcturian energies and uh, Andromeda energies for us at the moment. So we are experiencing an alignment. We also have Mercury, Mercury retrograde and a, uh, uh, there's been a full moon happening. We've also got an eclipse coming up in a few days because it's the 4th of uh, April at the moment. This is going to be a reading for the 4th until the 10th of April. So let's cut the deck here, um, and then we're going to just pull the. Um, I'll just sorry, I just want to uh, take you to this one here. So power flow will pop out here. So uh, first off, of that pull off the lovers and ten of swords. Uh huh. I think we're all you know to some extent experiencing ten of swords at the moment. Uh, just recently, here we go. Uh, this is so external and looking at the internal. We'll talk about these in a minute. Internal, okay. Temperance uh, and the Two of Swords came up yesterday in the Fire Science reading, and as did the Six of Cups. So um, let's pick these up first row, and I will just turn this up here so that I can just have a quick look. And actually, it will be looking like this. So. So external uh, things. So this is kind of looking like here that uh, let's look at the middle one first. Um, so <clears throat> I think um, currently, you know, you may be feeling like um, there's lots of things um, impacting you externally. There's lots of things going on outside of you, like in, in the world around you. And um, it's kind of like leaving you feeling a little bit like, like, what am I supposed to do with that? Or like, how am I going to navigate that? Or is it, you know, is it really kind of, is that really happening? Like, it's like there can be a lot of, um, if there's a lot of negative things that you're hearing or seeing or um you know even hearing off second or third hand like through someone else um then it's kind of like externally um it's uh, uh, that, we, that we do have a choice as to what we take in i mean obviously we can't control our response to everything that comes in but um well ideally we can what i'm trying to say is we can't control external things that happen so what we but what we can control is our what we do with that and also we can also control to some extent how much we put ourselves in front of that stuff as to how much we listen to it how much we look at it um how much we let it affect us okay um so um and this is here about um you know uh, taking some risks well this is like a, a carefree kind of attitude um and it may al almost be careless 
So you might perceive that outside of you there's a lot of like really careless things going on, but at the same time there can be some, um, this is also a, a source connection card, so I'm not saying you have to be careless to connect to source, but there's different ways to interpret this, okay? And there's always light and dark in every card, and I also like to think that there's different layers as well within each card, so it really depends what resonates with you at this time. But this could also represent um, that there's uh, some parts of society, or you might be, um, you might know of people, or maybe you you yourself are kind of moving into this um, higher frequency um, in connection with source, so your higher self, so your um, essence. You might feel that you want to be more true and authentic to yourself, which is what this card can also represent. Um, the fall is almost like you know the the child um, that. Um, the the purity of um, intention, um, the purity of the connection with, with the source here. Um, so, you know, you might be um, sensing some of that around you, or you may be hearing of, you may be hearing of some communities or groups or individuals or people who are moving into that, or maybe you're looking into some sort of spiritual um path that you might like to embark on because the, this is the fall at the beginning of his journey as well so he's about to step off into a new um, way of being a new a new journey a new um, new adventures and things like that and to discover things about himself that he doesn't know yet okay and many of us are doing that as we go through these um, energetic upgrades and chakras are upgrading or other things are coming online for us that we weren't aware of. So this could be about um, you either perceiving that in yourself or you hearing of it around you, maybe you're wanting to be a part of it, okay, because remember this top row is representing things that happen externally. Um, and this can represent um, relationships, it could represent a relationship that you're having with another person, it could be friendship, but it could also be that um, a sense that you're wanting to come into deeper connection with yourself, so deeper connection with your soul. And um, it's interesting that um, Carl Jung's ideas just come into mind here because um, uh, his ideas, which is quite interesting, one of them is that uh, men have within their psyche a feminine aspect, which is, um, I think he's called, calls that the anima, okay. So this could almost be like the a male coming into contact or awareness of his inner anima, so his inner feminine aspect or his his ability to be receptive, okay, and nurturing, and to um, start to incorporate that within his being more and more. And with uh, if you're a woman, the the situation there is that you have, of course, an inner masculine aspect, which is called the animus. So here it could be the woman coming into contact with her animus, so her inner masculine aspect, and this is all in, um, to balance things out, okay? Um, so it might mean that it's that aspect of her that, um, you know, there's lots of as lots of different characteristics of the anima and the animus, but a couple of for the animus may be that it's that aspect of her that um, helps her to take initiative, okay, and to... Um, Perhaps, um, yeah, perhaps to be, yeah, to take the initiative and to like venture out into the world and um, express things outwardly. Okay, so it's that um, projective energy. It's helping the woman to become more projective and helping the, the man to become a little more receptive. So, because that's the opposites of what we have within our aspect. So, it's all. Uh, and the interesting thing here is that this is almost like the higher self here, bringing the two together. You can also call it, a, this could also be looked at as your divine feminine and divine as, masculine aspects. Um, because I believe that there are a couple of um, extra chakras, like we have a soul chakra up here, but we also have a divine feminine and divine masculine chakra. So these energies feed in, um, receive uh, source energy, and they help to... Um, inform and um, you know transmit energy through um, the soul star and down into the um, uh, into the all the chakras so it's like we are um, 
and that can also help us to expand our consciousness and help us to step into other areas of, of how we are in the world even, how, step into how we interact with others in a different way. So it may be that you are sensing uh, some of this as well. And you may, have other, you may have other interpretations for these cards as well that come up to you. This, this could also mean um, your own inner child or perhaps being with children or animals here. Um, yeah, so that's really interesting. But the middle one, it's almost like um, it's this is almost representing the old themes that are kind of that are not resonating with you anymore, that are not serving you, and that are not helping you to move into these energies. Okay, as in source connection and um, expansion of consciousness and activating your um, divine feminine and masculine aspects. Um, so it might be that, you know, old ways of being, old habits, old ways of thinking, old ways of doing things and old ways of relating and not kind of cutting it anymore. So it's just, you know, you're just going to be dropping those out. So, you know, and yeah, take what resonates. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that is that. Um, right. I'm just going to hold up. So the internal energies, let's just hold these up. And I'm just going to have a sip of tea because I'm just getting a little bit dry. I don't know if you can sense that in my voice. I'm just... <laughs> um, right, so I'll just get you to have a look at those. So, um, yeah, two of swords and two of six of cups here. Um, and I'm just going to have a quick sip. Excuse me. Um, so this is some representing some internal energies that I've experienced here. So the temperance on the left there, that's very much about bringing things into balance about harmonizing things so if you know you've got that happening there but the temperance was directly under the the um you know your feminine and masculine aspects so all your um relationships so it's about you having a balanced approach to that um i think the yeah the, it's, it's going to be uh more high frequency as, as we evolve our consciousness, we're going to be less and less likely to fall into codependent um, relationships. Uh, because as you know, usually codependency, um, there's imbalance in codependency. Because for a start, the two people that come together are not really in a state of individual balance within themselves. So this is going to be about um, us, you know, bringing both aspects of ourselves into balance. Um, and you might be sensing this. So you may even be picking up that if you're in a relationship that you may, you may suspect it's codependent or it doesn't feel balanced to you or it tends, tends to make you feel off balance or um, not, or if you can, don't feel like you can be yourself um, in the relationship, then um, you may be needing to uh, find out ways that you can create some balance for you in your life so that you can either um, work on the relationship constructively to improve it and create more balance and harmony there, or may, perhaps you'd be cultivating other friendships and relationships down the track. Um, so this is about balance. Uh, it could be, um, or it might just be that you are wanting to balance your life out. So if your work, if your life has been all work and no play, or if your work is like pretty, uh, say it's a bit unfulfilling. You might be looking at balancing your feeling states out with some stuff that's going to be high frequency like that bring in some things that are going to make you feel happy and more joyful and peaceful and so on and fulfilled and perhaps spiritually connected to um and here we have internally we have the um the two of swords so this is a very internal card anywho um this came out on the internal energies for the fire signs as well uh, and this was placed directly under this one here. So isn't that interesting? If you have a lot of external things that are impacting you and perhaps exhausting you and just like creating overwhelm within you, it might be time to create a boundary or have times where you create a boundary and just say, right, this is just going to be time for me to go within, to just really love myself, take care of myself and to perhaps even work out a little plan of how I'm going to um, navigate this 
how I can pull out some of those swords, some of those things that are really impacting me, how what strategies and skills can, could I start to learn to help me to um, cope with that. Okay, and it might be you start maybe doing some meditation, you might just want to do a fun hobby like maybe some, you know, um, dancing or roller skating or something like that, that or helping or hanging out with different um, people that build you up, that you feel positive with, okay, if there are people here that are dragging you down. Um, so, yeah, so that's, and also the moon too, it's about really that quantum, deep contemplation too, about that really acknowledging your deep um, subconscious, your innermost heart's desires about what you want your life to feel like, okay, and what you, um, yeah, what uh, you would like to do to increase your feelings of happiness and fulfillment. Okay, so that's that could be something that's you're feeling at the moment. Um, and this one is interesting because it's um, there's a few different things here. This could be like an inner state of um, perhaps you're just reacquainting yourself with um, some childhood memories or things that you like to do. Maybe you've just you've discovered a um, a childhood hobby and you're re redoing that, reawakening the happiness and the joy that comes from you being able to do that. It can also mean um, sharing, like sharing good times uh, with others. Um, you know, maybe family or friends. And um, yeah, so it's, or maybe you are really looking for um, a positive connection with another um, with another person or a, within a group of people. Your soul is really looking to feel safe and secure and you're looking to open up a more of your inner truth. So you're wanting to feel safe in a group where you can be uh, perhaps even like your inner childlike self, like your, um, your inner self, okay, rather than that um, some of us do put, or we all need to put on masks and roles at different times. But um, if we've become really associated with that mask and we don't take it off and we can't get in touch with our um, inner um, with our inner hearts and our inner heart's desire, then um, we might be feeling with all these energies around that that some of this exterior mask and that is sort of cracking off or we're feeling like mm, this is this is there's some falsity going on here and there's a bit of crap happening and I and I don't really feel like I'm a part of this anymore, like this identity that I've created I don't know that that's me but the thing is just remember that you can always take that mask off for a time hold about your inner childlikeness and then put that mask on and go okay just acknowledge it as you know I'm playing this role at the moment because I'm doing that it's not like you have to be that role okay so you might be um just really sensing you need to be um for your inner child to sort of be Held, nurtured and loved and you can give that to yourself too if you you know take some time out to do that because sometimes that deep subconscious stuff is is the inner child things that are coming up but let's do a little bit of clarification as well um, Lovers is clarified by the, I think that's the Eight of Wands. No, it's the Nine of Wands, excuse me. So that um, young man there, he's looking very confident and very empowered. And this is almost like a spirit guide here, this lion. Um, and I always think of um, Sirius when I see this card, uh, Sirius Collective. Uh, yeah. And um, so here with the lovers you know this is about you um, being confident and bold and being really um, I guess very like focusing on like the self-determination of, of your spiritual aspect because it seems here that this is about your you know your animal and animal 
animus. So if you're a man, it's your anima. If you're a woman, it's your animus coming into more awakening into your consciousness. Um, because when those two energies within you are, um, you know, your own feminine, your masculine or your masculine feminine, are coming together and activating, you feel like your consciousness expands. And this is what this young man here, I believe, this person, is, it's almost like he's here in his physical presence, but he's also acknowledging his um, spiritual aspect. This almost looks like um, a, an aspect of him too. Sometimes aspects of our higher self here are um, actually us in a different dimension. So it could be um, that as well. There might be something else that comes up for you here as well. Um, it could also just be happening to the divine masculine, that the divine masculine acknowledges the spiritual. And that's why it's divine um, and that you know for um, for men in particular because this is a male figure here for men to realize that there is um, nothing sissy or unmasculine about being spiritual because a spiritual man is um, is you know is as powerful and as, as wise and as loving as a spiritual woman okay and we need more spiritual people in the world and that's how we're all evolving currently because we're all raising the frequency we're all raising up rising in frequency and rising in our consciousness and expanding in our consciousness so that's just kind of looking and this could also be a direct indication of um, you know, many of us on earth do have Syrian connections. Many of us have a Syrian aspect. So it might be that if you're a man or a woman, that you look into the collective of Sirius in particular. Let's clarify the Ten of Swords. I'm really looking really happy to clarify this. Um, Ten of Swords. Okay. Wow. The world card, folks. Okay. So, this can be interpreted in two ways. This might be feeling, this might feel like your world at the moment, like the state of the world, okay? But, um, you know, if you take those swords away, you know, say you take the swords out, it's really just hearkening to, perhaps it's time to rest because it, you going within, under here, you will discover that you have a whole world within you. That is yet to be discovered um and this is really interesting that roses and there's a lion here which we've just seen you know there's the taurus the bull um and you know there's this is a fascinating card. i love the artwork in this deck um and you know we have some star signs here as well some um, planets uh you know virgo and um, saturn uh, uh no there might be capricorn uh, I think that's very fine. Um, and then we have the eagle here. So, and that is, um, yeah, just reminding you that, okay, it might be feeling like things would be like this, but us humans are such that we have the ability to, um, you know, look, this is interesting. I see the synchronicity here right now. See that darkness there? Once we release these swords or these are no longer impacting us or we get rid of most of them, Okay. And we start to really look inward, like we go into our inward, so we need to close our eyes to go inward. See that how that's dark there? And look, it's the darkness here. So you might say that it's the dark night of the soul down here, but the thing is about the dark night of the soul is that the only way to go to the dark night of the soul is to go within. And look what bursts forth from the darkness if you can do that, if you can take time out okay that's how how some energy works because if things were all rosy there wouldn't really be a need to go in to find out inner resources in order to discover the magnificence within that we have okay so in some ways the darkness or going through this gives us an opportunity to move 
into this, which is even greater than just staying in humdrum and everything's okay. You know? Right, let's clarify the four. Um, okay, this ring is extending, sorry. We're going to clarify the four, hang on. Here we go, four the four. Um, four was clarified by the five of cups. Two, three, four, five, six. Where's the six of cups? I think the six cups there. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's the seven of cups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I stand corrected. It's the eight of cups. Of course it is. Um, and this is about, once again, being able to make a choice about stepping into a new opportunity and walking away from something else so it's about taking a a leap of faith so to speak so it's interesting we have some oh, we had a female image there but um you know like if you're um, a male here and you're like sort of thinking about the, the future and you're thinking well it's all doom and gloom have you gone within and have you discovered your spiritual aspect have you actually put effort and time into doing that? And that could apply to a man or a woman because the this stepping off is about humanity stepping off of a focus on material existence into a focus on spiritual existence and the spiritual riches that are within rather than the material riches that we gather that are external to us. Now, I'm not saying you can't have to be spirit if you're spiritual that you can't have external riches, okay? But it's like um, it's like a shift of um, emphasis, okay? There's been a past emphasis on creation of external wealth. Now, this we're coming into a new paradigm where the emphasis will shift into creating internal wealth in terms of spiritual um, emotional intellectual creative that type of thing okay so it's really about um, making a choice you can either be here or you can be here okay taking that leap of faith and here once again there's always you know you can it depends which cups you you are focusing on you can look at the empty cups or this uh, gentleman here he could turn around and look at the full cups behind him Okay. It's a it's a matter of focus. Okay, what you look at it's choice, choice and focus, choice or focus. Sorry. Let's clarify the temperance. Um, the temperance. Okay, one jumped out, and we have this is the star. It's gorgeous. So the star is about healing. Um, we mentioned um, moving out of um, codependence or creating inner balance for oneself. And this is also about, um, yeah, just healing and really looking at the holistic aspect of life. Um, but also source, spirit connection card, earth connection, um, looking at conscious mind, um, you know, subconscious stuff, um, but also being natural and being authentic here uh, and being in one's integrity as well so that's they are things that we can keep in mind as we are cultivating the temperance is to perhaps take time out to just check in and see are we moving towards integrity do we feel that we're acting in our own best truth and if we do feel like we need healing are we taking the time to do that um that i'll be taking the time that we need to heal from something okay um and this is a this is a sorry spirit's just saying now this is a time of great healing right now because when we wake up to other aspects of ourselves it is it is healing it's a bringing together it's a creating of wholeness okay let's clarify the um two of swords Two of Swords. 
Actually, this is the um, Aquarius card here. The star is the Aquarius. And the lovers is actually Gemini too. So you have your power card here, Gemini. And here you have the Aquarius card. Okay, what's uh, Two of Swords card, sorry. Okay, Two of Swords. What flipped over backwards was the... I think this is the King of Swords. So there's an eagle, high consciousness. And what that means is that if you're creating boundaries to go within and you are so taking time out um, to perhaps make a decision or to get clear on something and also particularly to work on perhaps removing some of those swords, you are going to... Um, come out, you know, victorious by, we have the King of Swords as well in our last reading, interesting, um, you're going to have um, more, a clear idea of what your personal truth is, um, you're going to have more focus, you're going to have a bit of a direction as to you, you'll know where you need to go, and you'll also be able to feel like you can communicate that, um, because, and it might be actually good to write things down. So, um, you know, swords is also suit, a suit about communication and uh, getting clear on things. So sometimes journaling can be really great. Um, and maybe just taking some time out to do some um, writing, journaling, um, yeah, things like that. And uh, this is the Libra. So Libra, King of Swords, this is one of your, your cards as well. Um, so it's interesting, it'll all come up in the readings here, and of course we have air, the high consciousness bird here. Um, so that's really cool. But it's about getting clear. This is like clarity um, will be happening. Um, clarity of thought too. And it might also be that you're going to be looking into some... Um, uh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> looking to some um, mental or mindfulness strategies that you could use that that are going to help you with this as well. Okay. Um, let's clarify the Six of Cups. Six of Cups. Okay. Six of Cups is clarified by... Oh, we have the Cups here as well. We have the King of Cups. That's nice. So the King of Cups is, um, you know, very understanding, compassionate. And, um, you know, if whatever you are looking at here, which might be looking at your inner um, child, you may feel a little, uh, maybe feel a little um, raw or, how can I say, um, Maybe some childhood stuff is coming up for you and you might be feeling a bit uncertain as to know what to do with it. But if you take a little time out and you really turn back yourself and back in your inner child, you will be able to kind of reap the rewards because what happens is that when um, you acknowledge your inner child and allow that influence to come through a little more in your life, it will automatically create more balance for you in life. And so here, the King of Cups is just really saying, you know, you can still be an adult and have an um, acknowledge your own inner child at your core. Um, it just means that you, um, and even if you were hurt as a as a child, perhaps you were being hurt, you know, some upsets or um, some traumas or things like that. Um, many of us have had, you know. Um, you know, experiences of, you know, um, you know, neglect, possibly um, abuse of different types. Um, so, and it might be that, you know, and often we blame ourselves for things that happened or maybe we've been judged unnecessarily, we've been brought up conditionally um, or anything like that. But it's saying that, you know, with wisdom, patience and understanding, you can take care of that inner part of yourself because your inner adult uh, that's why humans are so resilient because we are able to 
acknowledge all these aspects of ourselves and to we can heal them through our connection to source uh, through our this is you know beautiful source connection here through prayer gratitude uh, thankfulness and um, yeah and also acknowledging that there's more to us than just our own physical form there's more to us than just our uh, the gender that we associate with because in other lives on other dimensions we've probably experienced other genders okay so it's about seeing and accepting more parts of ourselves um, and also you know we have an ego we have a higher self we have you know subconscious we have you know um, lots of different aspects and also you know our past lives we have a lot of wisdom to offer and to share with others too um, yeah and this I mean you could pop it this way too you know it's, it's like lovingly looking upon the, the inner child so look upon your inner child um, with love and acceptance acknowledgement even to acknowledge it even just to look at it um, one little exercise that is good when I was um, that good to do for inner child is you get a big sheet of big sheet of paper and with your non-dominant hand like a crayon or something just draw yourself as a child okay um, and then just start and then on the paper do some journaling around that and just see what emotions come up for you um, you might like to ask yourself some questions like, you know, um, how did I feel growing up as a child? You know, what, what were my relationships like with my mum, with my dad, um, you know, with my siblings? Um, so, yeah, so internally just really taking some adult time to just check that out. Um, what time have we got? 36 minutes. Okay, let's, we're going to grab some um, Ascended Master guidance now. Uh, signs and Warrior. Or light being guidance to help us at this time to help you rather uh, Libra Aquarius and Gemini it's interesting that you all have a little power card here today and, and let's just let's have a cut with that for you some ascended master guidance so here we have I love this deck it's awesome so nice okay so our air, us air signs, or if you have a lot of air in your chart, okay, um, you know, we can tend to be up in up in the head a little bit. So um, Serenos is about that life force. It's about grounding, coming back into the body a little bit more. Express your driving passion. Sensual and sexual powers are increased. So one thing that you may like to do, which might be what this is um, alluding to here, is that see the smelling of the roses here that's like partaking of the senses so perhaps um, in uh, perhaps participating or getting engaged in an activity that really brings you in contact with your senses and one thing that comes to me mind right now is cooking so you could um, do some cooking which really engages that smell taste even the touch you know as well and um, and the sight too, the beautiful colours that you can look at through the different foods, um, and um, you know, um, and also yeah, sensual and sexual powers increase. I mean, if you you know if you're out with a partner that you really like or you're attracted to, obviously making them a beautiful meal is going to be attractive, and that also that's a, a quite a sensual experience too. Um, you know, eating a beautiful meal. Um, so you know that's the life force. And uh, Serenos, that is a Celtic um, god energy. And, yeah, just really grounding and um, bringing in, in touch with nature as well. Like the star card here too. And temperance is also very barefoot on the earth, you know, here. So that's going to perhaps really help with um, grounding the energy down because this here can also almost be a... It's an overwhelm of thoughts, information, um, news that you don't want to hear, um, all of that head stuff, okay, that becomes, basically takes you over, mind, body, spirit, takes over you, or it can feel like that, okay, that's what I'm trying to say, it feels like that. Um, Serenos is really guiding you to get back into your own body feel your own body even going out in nature like the bull here i'm not saying jump off a cliff but you know i'm saying 
walking out there, enjoying the sunshine, going for a little backpack, going for a hike. Um, yeah, and smelling the roses, of course. Um, going for outside and playing with the kids if you have them. Um, could be great. And then the second one, we have this Earl Mariah. Wow, this is so awesome. I believe he works with the um, second chakra, which is the sacral chakra. So that's the one for the third one, which is for creativity. Awakening presence. The universe is with you. Wear a cloak of protection and love. Okay, the universe is with you. El Mariah. Uh, he was an ascended master. Um, so lived on earth. Uh, you might like to Google him as well. Check him out. And I'm really liking, giving me chills, that there's, I have a feeling that there's, um, you know, some, uh, some, some of you obviously are going, oh, watching this video, that um, this is almost a reading for men. I'm kind of getting that feeling. But um, because these are, see how he's a very spiritual man. Okay. Um, just really in tune, really, um, yeah, awakening presence. So you are going through an awakening as we all are. And this is the you know the world saying the universe is with you. So see look this this is like a, almost a universe card or a world card as well. Um and so I was gonna say, yeah, I'm also really really loving this. Uh sorry, hearkening for this card because it's um you know a, a cloak of protection and love and the presence. So you are awakening to your own presence of your own soul. Yeah, the presence of your spiritual aspect that the deeper part of you not the personality or the work or the the role mask that you put on but everything else that's under that okay the omara and of course there obviously there are there are parts of our true selves that come through in our work obviously but you know um oftentimes there are deeper things as well okay so that's really lovely um the El Mariah and Serenus. Okay, we're going to also grab a couple of uh, get some dragon guidance because, as you know, we have the dragon energies working with us at this time, which I'm really so grateful for. And let's just see. Um, the Serenus card also has a moon at the top there. See that? That's a moon figure which is shape, which is here as well. So if you are going inward to create boundaries, time out for yourself, I think this is definitely saying that, you know, go out in nature. You know, go out in nature. There's a lot of uh, male images here. We've had the King of Swords, the King of Cups, you know, both Ascended Masters have been in the male aspect and we have um, the King of Cups with the males there too, but it's always balanced. But like, you know, this reading obviously applies to women as well, of course. Let's cut the deck here and we're going to grab a couple of, wow, the air and water dragon. Okay, air signs, here we go, air and water. So we've had the element of earth influence you and now you can bring in some water, hence the cups. So we're going to read this, helps you to connect to higher frequencies. Oh yeah, that's what's happening. Trust your intuition. So that's something else that you can tap into as you are giving your boundaries, your time out. Develop your psychic abilities. Be open to enlightenment. Express your inner song. Wow, that's kind of self-explanatory. But yeah, using the element of water, um, being with water or having a, a shower to just, you know, metaf using it energetically to wash away some of this or all of it, um, you know, baths, going to pools, um, yeah, or even just, um, you know, getting a, uh, even like aquariums, going to um, a marine world or something and looking at all the fish in the water, you know, and often when we uh, see, you know, or going to a beach or, you know, to a lake or something and just really enjoying the peace and the calm of the water and just really um, taking in the water. Because that can be quite, um, yeah, it's softening, but it's helping you to connect, to connect to higher frequencies. I really love that. And I'm just going to take another one straight off the top here. Uh, the dragons, oh, gorgeous. Pink, um, rose pink dragon. That is gorgeous. 
So that is that love letter to him. Prepares your heart to connect with the higher facets of the cosmic heart. Oh my god, that's so awesome. You know, this is the sister lovers here as well. Okay. Um, open your heart to warm hearted love and diamond light. Connect with the love of the universe. So that's really encouraging as well. And look at the fool. That's exactly what he's doing. He's sort of connecting to that feeling of like, you know, being at one with his surroundings. Um, and, uh, yeah. And this one too. You know, just having that feeling of freedom and uh, love. And, um, yeah. Sorry, I could look at that card for ages. Um, so yeah, connect, prepares your heart to connect with the higher facets of the cosmic heart. So that's what this inner child work is about too. It's um, and I keep picking this up now because it's it's, it's like your it's about self love, okay? And it's about you preparing your heart for higher frequencies. And love is really the way to go if you're not sure how to, you know, how to navigate all of this, and you're throwing your hands in the air and you're just going what. You know, it's like the best thing you can do is just double down and just do some self-care, some self-love, connect to the earth, um, you know, get in touch with your inner child, do some journaling, honour it. And, um, you know, if it brings up really deep, upsetting things for you, you may need to just have a couple of sessions, a few sessions with a counsellor or something like that, just to work through that part. Um, but... You know, um, yeah, just your own capacity to for love, and that is going to be fantastic. Forty six minutes, right? We're going to grab a heritage card to finish off. Galactic heritage, and this is going to be a galactic frequency that I might like to tap into or collect with at this time uh, for your air signs. So Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini. And um, you're def definite guidance to connect to the earth here and get in touch with that life force. Um, maybe doing some really grounding activities like some, maybe some yoga or tai chi or uh, yeah, even just physical exercise. Okay, that's really grounding and that's going to help with the life force, the regeneration of your life force. Because even though this might be all head stuff, it may be feeling like it's sapping your life force. Okay, you might need to. Um, Take a serious look at that. Um, right, Galactic Collective. Oh, I'm going to get even a couple deck now. And one off the top. And we have <coughs> Black Leg Patterning. Oh, wow. Okay. Orion. Right. So this is, um, I think we can learn from the past. Um, I might have to pause the video really briefly. Um, the postal van just pulled up in front of my house. And I'm thinking they're going to run in here or something. Um, I'll be back in a minute. We're back. Right, so the Black League patterning, um, we're going to read about it right now. But that was to do with, uh, with the, the wars that went on and um, the Black League that was developed. Um, let's just have a quick read here. Pretty late. Um, apologies for the glare here. Right, let's just read that quickly. That's better. The secret Orion Society fighting the negative forces was called the Black League. So they were the underground, um, the back, the um, resistance, so to speak. They operated covertly and were a major force for inspiration and hope. Um, you have had ex you have had experience with this group and this latent tendency of resisting authority or fighting for peace in a deep is a deep karmic pattern. Today it is important that this polarity of us versus them, the polarity of us versus them, be healed. Shift your focus away from light and dark scenarios. Begin to see reality in a unified way with all manifestations being an equal and valued part of creation itself. So that is about stepping away from dramas. It's about stepping away from 
the us and them mentality. It's about not being party to one side and creating more conflict. Okay, so if you feel like there's um, so much going on and you feel like you that you're supposed to take sides on 10 different issues going on in the world, okay, um, that's an old way of thinking, an old way of processing things. It's better to just step back from it and just um, be neutral because it's sort of saying that, you know, it's not... <laughs> It's not a high frequency and high, highly evolved way of being to take sides on things. If it's at all possible, um, you know, to to not take sides or just to have a rather the rather an opinion of, well, an understanding that people are doing that because of A or B but that you yourself have a choice. You don't actually need have to participate in A or B, okay? Um, so it's saying, yeah, begin to see reality in a unified way with all manifestations being an equal and valuable part of creation itself. So as we evolve in consciousness and expand our consciousness, we are going to come more into a state of non-judgment and more into peace and harmony and there will be no need for conflict once more peace and harmony happens okay and I guess in parts of the world where um, you know people are being uh, you know attacked in an unjust way or they're being persecuted for no reason it's not we can have an opinion on that and say that that's wrong but it's not a good idea to then go and um, create another war about it or to join one side to create more war. Um, you know, like, yeah, it's about moving out of that old pattern of, of, of us and them. And it might be that, you know, maybe in your mind that you are feeling that you that you have to take sides so it's it's really about letting that go but letting that go and just becoming more aware of what is your personal truth what is your personal philosophy you know rather than worrying about what other people think and believe and feeling that we've got to ascribe to a or b all those groups out there it's like well just pull back out of that and go well what's what's your belief you know and then just say well you know i mean it's a great country take what resonates <laughs> i'm not telling anyone to do anything in particular okay i just get a little bit um i don't know worked up but I am fortunate and it depends on which part of the world you live in if you are deeply ingrained in a society or a culture where you need to take a side or you're going to die like that's an entirely different situation from being in a another corner of the world that's not affected by war that I mean it's not directly participating in a war that can, you know, I mean, it's easy then to say, well, you know, you don't need to have an opinion and you don't need to take sides, okay? Um, so I'm fully, fully aware of that, that it depends on where you live in the world as to how much that's going to resonate with you. But I think the takeaway from that is to just be aware of the dramas. If, if there's a drama that you can avoid being involved, involved in, then try not to be involved in the drama because it might just be causing more low vibrational energies to reverberate around and certainly within you as well. The more you are involved in low vibe dramas, the, the more your energy is going to, the more your frequency is going to lower um, and drop down. But obviously there may be times when you need to participate or to help someone in that situation. You know, it entirely depends. So please take what resonates and discard the rest. Um, that brings us to the end of the reading for today. And um, yeah, and I just almost feel like pulling another card off the top here. Um, here we go, Vega. 
um, power of sound. So that's just something else that we're just going to pop in there. So Vega was another um, civilization culture, or is, sorry, that um, you can use sound to help to raise your frequency to music, to help you to shift. And there are so many different genres of music that you could tap into. Um, and even as you were, when you were a child, maybe look into some music that you used to enjoy and revisit that. Okay, Some old faves you might like to put on a player and just have a look. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. Hope some of that was helpful. And I uh, look forward to doing the next reading with you. Bye for now.